Okay, in today's family history lesson, it's all about you. Today, it's all about you. Um, or all about me. This is our Elijah Project workbook, pages seven through nine the about me section. And this tends to be the trickiest part of filling out this workbook. I guess that we're used to wanting to talk about anybody but ourselves. We tell stories about, you know, let's talk about grandma, let's talk about grandpa, but how often do we really focus in on ourselves and who we are and our part in our family history? The first part, of course, is just the vital statistics, your name, your dates, your places of birth. Um, even the next part's kind of generic. My interests, my traditions. In fact, in the original Elijah project that I put together, um, again, this was for 12 and 13 year old girls. It was just one page where um, what I want people to know about me and my hobbies, interests, and favorite traditions. But when I redesigned this for adults, I had read some other books and thought that I had found some kind of soul searching questions. Now, I may have shown this before. This Elijah Project book is the one I put together as a beta test that I did with just our Relief Society presidency and we just spiral bound it and kind of saw what we liked and didn't like. So I've changed it a bit, but as I walk you through the About Me section, I'm going to go talk a little bit about what I did with each section. In my um, my experience, let's go to five interesting things that I have done. Um, after I did this, I wrote five most interesting things that I have done and I took away the most. Just five interesting things that made it a little easier, not trying to be this incredibly interesting person. Now, in all of these questions, I ask people to take kind of the immediate family out of your answers because my natural response is to be like, well, it's having six children or it's the day I got married or, um, so kind of taking the spouse and the children and maybe even the parents out of the equation and just really looking at yourself and who you are, just yourself. And it makes the, it makes the answers a lot more difficult, I think, but it, it's a good exercise. <clears throat> so some five interesting things that I have done, like one of them is I have, um, swung on a vine, Tarzan style, across a ravine in a rainforest in Tonga. And um, another interesting thing happened to me, I was kissed by a sea lion. Now interesting as I, as I look at my responses, I see that every one of these could be a, a prompt for a story that I could write. I just, you know, filled in the blank, but I should tell you the story of why I was swinging on a vine in Tonga or what I was doing face to face with a sea lion. Um, all remember family history stories, love the stories, but let's move on. Page eight, five defining moments in my life. Now it was a while after I wrote this and I was coming back to teach a class and I was looking at my responses and I noticed that five defining moments in my life, four of my answers begin with the word choosing. And one of them begins with learning. So I just thought it was interesting that the things that define me were about choices that I have made. So choosing to do this, choosing to have gratitude about something that was hard. Um, I mean, the choices that I made have made me the person that I am, have defined me. I thought, I thought that was neat. Um, come back. Uh, five pivotal people in my life. Now I'll tell you, I tried to do these responses without talking about husband and children. So I wrote my responses, but then I kind of penciled in my family responses off to the side. I just didn't want my page to be without saying that really, you know, how important the, my husband and my children are in my life. But um, the five pivotal people in my life, I've named um, one relative, one friend, um, a church leader, an author. So it took me some time. I really had to think like, that person 
yeah, that person helped define who I am, helped me make those choices. Um, five, am I going off? Five of my greatest achievements. My page is different than this page because this was more of a rough draft. So five people have been influential in my life. I had five pivotal people. Five of my greatest achievements. Now, I kind of cheated on this one. On my book, I said two achievements of which I'm most proud. And I only wrote one. So I should come back and redo this and write five of my greatest achievements. And again, it would be hard not to have this just be my children, but, um, and again, the one I wrote, it was a choice, choosing to, and then my response. So, greatest achievements, five things I would be unwilling to live without. I think your answer there will help your posterity learn things about you. Um, in mine, I only wrote three things I was unwilling to live without. It was what I asked for, but I wrote four. I don't think it'd be very hard to come up with five or ten things that we really would not want to be living without. And um, three words I hope would describe me. In my rough draft, I have one word and I wrote three. So for my class, I said, let's write three words that you hope would describe you. That people would say, oh, she was really whatever. And then really what I mo most want people to know about me. So this exercise takes some time and some introspection but it's a great exercise as you start your path down the family history. Family history is not just all about ancestors. It's not all about your posterity. It's about you. You are the center of your own family history.